Hey there, welcome back. Okay, today what I, I thought I'll just stop and show you what I'm doing because this is a classic food forest planting, okay? So we wanna make sure that we have all of the niches, right? We need insectary, something that's gonna bring in the beneficial insects. We need something that is a fumigant or some things, I would say many of these things in all the different niches. We need a um, nitrogen fixer. We need, let's see, what's the other one? Dynamic accumulation, which I'm not sure if you listen to the podcast, but if you go listen to the podcast, you'll see how I feel about dynamic accumulation. I'm just not that worried about it because everything dynamically accumulates. Sorry about the wind, guys, but I thought I better just go ahead and do this video um, because this is just such a prime example right here. Okay, so here we go what you see right here and I've got some water going on in the background back here but these are the plum trees these are the plum trees right here we did lose one plum tree right here um, in the winter storm and we lost a lot of this sage plant but it just bounced back and it is about to let me see if I can do this without stepping on anything it is about to bloom if you've never seen the video on culinary sage and what it looks like oh my gosh you got to go watch that it is just gorgeous but it usually has a dome shape and i would call it a sub shrub it's perennial it's just there all the time but let me just stop right here and say i think that it's a good idea to just kind of plan for maybe four or five square feet at a time because if you try to think of it on the whole let me show you what I'm talking these about. These are here. all of my, these are all of my things. These are all of my food forests. Not all of them. It's only a part, maybe like a, a fourth of what I have. I've got the pomegranate trees and the cherry trees and the pear trees, yeah, the peach trees, all the stuff. But I tend to get really overwhelmed when I think about it on the whole. It's a lot better to think of it in just a small piece at a time. And instead of trying to think of it on the whole. So let me show you what I've got going on. All right, in the fumigant category, we have this sage right here. We have some onions right here. We have cilantro right here. We also have some onions and some garlic back there. Daffodils, daffodils, I mean, they've already played out, but daffodils are a strong fumigant and mostly underground. They repel moles and voles. And, and then potatoes. And then we have the cilantro. This is a big cilantro patch. But over here, I, uh, I have started over here, but we have more garlic and onions. And then we have more daffodils. Okay, so that's in the fumigant category and I might be forgetting something. And then we also have the insectary. The insectary is what brings in and attracts those beneficial insects. Things are there that are gonna do the pollinating for me and I don't have to worry about it. So when these flowers bloom, even though it's a fumigant on this sage plant, it's gonna put on the most beautiful, awesome flowers and the bees are just gonna be all over this. And then we have the cilantro that has already started to bolt and it's putting on seed. It's actually, it's, it's flowering first. I'm gonna have uh, beneficial wasps, those tiny parasitic wasps. Oh, look, I oh, love it when this happens. Ladybugs. I usually see ladybugs all over this. So anything that's going to uh, protect, this is how I do my pest management, okay? It's going to protect my bok choy. It's going to protect the tomatoes that I'm going to plant on this fence line right here. It's going to protect these plum trees right here. It's going to protect anything else that I put in here that is food. And then over here, I also have a lot of oregano. I'm just going to come over here and talk about this oregano for a minute. Okay, so attracts beneficial insects is not just about the flowers. Beneficial insects live up under there. That is like Sherwood's forest. It's a ground cover. It's very dense and it's going to protect a lot of ground beetles. It's going to protect a lot of, I don't know, I don't really want to stick my hand in there because there could be a praying mantid in there. Um, there could be good spiders in there there's a lot of spiders that make webs but there's a lot of spiders that live up under something like this that really do a good job of attacking 
Uh, there may be ground wasps in here. But this is a plant for beneficial insects because of the denseness. I call it Sherwood Forest. I really don't want to put my hand up too far in there. Because there's something that's going to, it's going to provide protection for the beneficial insects. It's not just about the flowers. It's about this dense canopy. It's their own little universe going on down in there. But let me show you something else. So these are little alliums. Let's see. They're just little wildflowers. They just come up wild everywhere. They're just everywhere. And you know what? They're considered weeds, but I don't mind them. They're pretty and they're doing a job. They're bringing in beneficial insects. They're some of the first flowers that bloom and then they're gonna die back and then they'll come back next year. Here's another crop that I have that is also, uh, for me, it's a ground cover right here. And this is cucamelons. The cucamelons have started to emerge and they will just cover the ground right here. Again, protecting beneficial insects. Chamomile, these are going to, I just planted these, but they are going to produce little white flowers that I plan on harvesting and using, but they're also gonna attract beneficial insects. And then the cosmos, those are gonna attract beneficial insects. This larkspur is going to attract beneficial insects. Okay, so we have the fumigants, the onions, the garlic, the sage, uh, all the things we talked about, the cilantro, um, all the things we talked about. And then we have the insectary that's going to attract beneficial insects. So we have one that's gonna repel and we have one that's going to attract. It repel the pest, attract the beneficial insects. And now we need some nitrogen fixers, right? So what am I going to do here for nitrogen fixation? I'm gonna do beans. I already have peas in some of the other parts of the garden and I have blue bonnets. I don't have blue bonnets in this area right here, but when my blue bonnets go to seed, I will be um, just pulling them off over there in that area over there and then I'm just gonna be planting them over here, probably just throw them on the ground over here. So where that will be my nitrogen fixtures and beans just in this area right here. I might do some bush beans, like some um, Kentucky Wonder green bean, snap bean type beans uh, that will be more like a bush. I am about to plant some dill over here as well. So I'm just looking for a bare spot, okay? Um, the Cosmos right there. We've got the bok choy right there. And that bok choy is planted there for a very specific reason. It's not right on the edge because we do have rabbits and deer. And we have dogs and we have cats. Um, but I'm going to do some groupings of bok choy. I'm just kind of playing around. I'm just kind of painting with flowers and, and food right here, right now. And when all of this fills in, this is really just like a three or four foot area right here, right now. Okay, so where am I going to plant this dill? Let's pick a spot, okay? Well, I thought I was recording, but I wasn't. <laughs> so I've already planted it, but here's what I did. Okay, I went ahead and planted my dill on each side of my stone path here. And so basically it's just gonna frame what I have uh, going on right here. I kind of stepped back, but whenever I step into this area, this lets my guests or invitees know they're invited to come in, but it also sets some boundaries like stay on the stone path, right? <laughs> because we don't want to compress the soil. And this just allows me to uh, have a place to be able to step whenever I'm picking my plums. You can see there's a lot of little baby plums all over this thing. So uh, whenever I'm picking my plums, I have a place to step. So I'm not stepping on any of my stuff here. So I went ahead and put dill here and dill right here. And dill likes it kind of cool. So this is gonna actually help provide an overstory, which is the plum trees right here. And uh, it's gonna have dappled sun and it's just gonna be, it's just gonna last longer being right there. So I have these little white markers and you can go watch the video on how I make my markers. They're not real pretty plant markers, but they help me really see where I need to focus my water, especially when they're brand new, because I did grow these from seed in the greenhouse and I certainly, I certainly could have planted seeds in here and they would have grown just fine. But I kind of like to be able to visualize where I'm planting something. I have so many choices. <laughs> That's the hard part. 
Sometimes my thought process is to do it all on paper. And sometimes my thought process is just to come out here and do it. So I still need to figure out where I'm going to plant my beans, which um, I'm just gonna kind of tuck them in here and there. And uh, maybe even tuck them in between this spot right here because this bok choy is not gonna be long lived. Yeah, I am going to plant that. This is a Blue Lake bush bean and I'm gonna put it right there and I'm gonna put another one right there. So this is gonna be a bush type, it's not a pole type, it's not a vining type. I'm probably gonna put one right there, one right there, one over there. Um, I'm probably, these onions are gonna get pulled before too long and that bok choy is gonna be eaten before too long. So probably put one right there. So by the time it starts growing, it's gonna have plenty of room in this area. And I think I might go ahead and put one over there as well. So I'm just spreading the nitrogen, the nitrogen fixers around. And then the other thing that I forgot to mention is I am going to be planting some peanuts as well. Peanuts don't get big so and bushy. I buy the raw peanuts. Don't, don't buy the roasted peanuts because they've been, they've had the life cooked out of them. They still have life in them. I've done it many times. It works great. And there is kind of a, a method to doing it so I'll just do another video on that some other time all right I think that's gonna do it for this one I'm gonna get back to planting I just wanted to show you it's a really good idea to just do like four or five square feet at a time and then move on and do the other I don't know four or five square feet like this is the area I'm going to be working on next like that area right there okay. so basically we've put in all of the niches I believe everything dynamically accumulates I don't worry about dynamic accumul accumulation uh, we've got the what's going to bring in the insects, we've got in what's going to confuse and repel pests, we've got um, nitrogen fixation and everything dynamically accumulates in my opinion. So yeah, so that is what is going on oh, today. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and give it a thumbs up if you liked it and there's a little share button down here if you know someone who's really into it. Until next time, bye for now.